on Thursday, a ceasefire was announced between Israel and Hamas. This follows days in which over 70 rockets were launched from Gaza and into southern Israel, along with Israeli airstrikes killing Hamas militants. Despite the truce, residents of the Israeli south are still shaken up from this week's attacks. In the last few days, we received a telephone call, an urgent telephone call, 7.30 in the morning, that there is a big missile attack. Netiv Asara, one of our uh, settlements, got a big uh, portion of missiles coming into the uh, place, around 20 to 30 missiles. And because of it, uh, lots of people became under anxiety attacks and stress. And we had to come with a big uh, team, social workers and psychologists, with a big team and uh, spread out uh, to the houses and take care of the people. This home is one of the locations which were hit over the last few days. It is now being repaired so that the families can return to their everyday routine. We took a full barrage of Qassam rockets from Gaza. And as you can see from the evidence, we took a, a bad hit. Early Wednesday morning, the Elon family's home in this Nativ HaSara Moshav community in southern Israel took a direct hit by a rocket. Greg, his pregnant wife, and both their daughters rushed into their bomb shelter and were therefore saved. This is the way we have to live, always under terror and the attack. That civilian houses have been attacked day and night. It's been like this for the last about eight years we've been living like this. Sometimes more, sometimes less, There's sometimes a few weeks of quiet, but then usually it comes back with all the relts and the bombs falling around in the area. They have to bring up kids in Israel living under bombs and running to bomb shelters. I don't think it's normal. I don't think it should be like this. I don't, uh, I hope that nobody else has to live like this because it's not natural that my four-year-old daughter and my seven-year-old daughter have to go to sleep at night worried if the bomb shelter is uh, good enough, if it's protected enough, if there's going to be more bombs, less bombs, if they can sleep, they're not going to sleep, if we have to leave the Moshav. Very sad. Bomb hit over there on the side of the house, into the roof from there. Then part of the roof here collapsed in. Uh, inside the roof, there's major damage inside the roof itself. I would say that it's estimated at over $50,000 of damage. But uh, thank God it ended with uh, only financial damage and not physical damage. Bricks can be replaced, roof tiles can be replaced. Of course, the damage psychologically to our community is another story that can't be replaced in a hurry. And it's something we've learned to live with over the last 30 years that we've been living on the border with Gaza. And the Elon family is not the only one who was affected. Social workers and medical staff were called on site to treat about 30 families who were impacted with trauma and anxiety, which can at times be more severe than physical injuries. Living under rocket attack for so many years can uh, make the people weaker and weaker and they have mental problems and this is much, much more worse than physical uh, problems. Because a physical problem, you can uh, get over it. But mental problem, it's difficult to get over it. It's your mind, it's your soul, it's inside you. You think about it all the time. You have syndromes that come out and you get a physical illness because of it. And yet still, despite the gravity of the situation and its costs, families who live under continuous rocket attacks, such as the ones that took place in Israel this past week, insist that they will not be driven away from their homes. The solution is not running away. That's not going to solve the problem. If I move today to Ashdol, they fall in Ashdol. I move to Rishon Etzion, so a year's time that will fall in Rishon Etzion. When there was a war a few years back with Iraq, they fell in Tel Aviv in Ramad Gan. When there was a war in the north, they fell in Haifa. It's a very small country. We're talking about Israel. There's no, no place to run to. It's not in the States that you can go a thousand miles this way, ten thousand miles that way. The whole state of Israel is five, six hundred kilometers from north to south. It's about two hundred kilometers east to west. There's nowhere to go. If I leave my house for the Palestinians, that's a victory. They succeeded. They shot enough bombs. We got cold feet. We got scared. We don't want to live like this. I ran away. I will never give them the satisfactory to run away from my house because of the Palestinians. That's not going to happen. That's caving in, and that's not going to happen. We're here, and we're going to stay here. 
For JN1, I'm Sivan Raviv, Southern Israel.